led our nation from June of 79 to March of 1980. And now Canada's 16th Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Joe Clark, has written a book about our country's role in the world and how Canada could be a leader in the future. He joins us now with a look at how we lead Canada in a century of change. Let's start with uh, why us and why now? Why are we the right country and why are we the right time to lead? Now, uh, it, because we have qualities that the world needs more than ever, what's happened in the world, to simplify it, is that the source of conflict used to be ideology, the Soviet Union against the West. Yep. Uh, with the end of the Cold War, that faded away, but what has grown is conflict among cultures, different faiths, different ways of looking at things, and it's really a, a, a very major problem everywhere. Uh, we need people who have some skill in respecting diversity and in bringing people together. We have both those skills. Uh, we Canadians are better at that literally than anyone else in the world, and uh, we've proven that it's not only a quality we have, it's a reputation we have. We're not doing enough of it, we could be doing more. It's going to become more important in the world that is, uh, uh, that is taking shape. Uh, and why Canada? Because we have those qualities. Uh, others have them too. Right. One of the things I think we should be looking at is whether we should be uh, drawing, more, drawing closer to other countries who have those qualities uh, because if we work with them, our cumulative impact will be greater if both, than if both do, do it alone. You mentioned in the book the idea of uh, leading from beside. First, if you, it's, it's a rather a big idea, but if you can explain it quickly and let us know why that suits Canada. First of all, international affairs used to be run by states, by governments. Uh, now, increasingly, there are non-state organizations, non-governmental organizations that play a major role. For example, Greenpeace right. has more impact upon public policy than point, most nations. You point do. them out to the Gates Foundation, organizations like that. That's right. And, uh, in fact, it was a Winnipegger who demonstrated what can be done with this because when Lloyd Axworthy was, was foreign minister, he was able to bring together the great human force that had been driven uh, by the landmines crisis but couldn't get anything done because people can advocate, but they can't act. Governments can act, uh, but it's sometimes hard to get them to move. Uh, Canada is in a unique position to draw together non-governmental organizations and states. I think one of the things we should be looking at is, what are the next landmines issues? What is another issue where the world needs to change? There's a popular desire for it, but the, but the governments are not responding. And can we once again move in and bring all those elements together, which is what Canada historically has been very good at. Maybe that idea of, of leading from beside, being part of the very issue much. as we move forward. Yeah. If we're changing the way the world works and who, for lack of a better term, runs the world, does that mean that the old leaders are going away? Is the book about the decline of the American empire? It's not at all about decline. It's about the fact that a lot of countries that were, uh, uh, were not able to be effective are now grow growing into power. Uh, that's the case, obviously, with China, India, Brazil. Uh, but it's also the case with a lot of countries in Latin America uh, and, in, uh, uh, and in Africa. And what uh, the great good news for the world is that while this is happening, more people are coming out of poverty, more people are learning more. Uh, modern media mean people are in touch with things. It's a world full of potential, but we're not going to be able to rely upon one country alone leading change. We have to do it together. And therefore, countries like Canada that are good at leading from beside are, have a role that uh, could be much stronger than we've ever had before. And we want to talk a little bit about some of the issues facing Canadians right now. A lot of people noting that you are the youngest Prime Minister ever. Uh, the day before you turned 40, you were sworn yes. in as PM. And a lot of people talking about Justin Trudeau being so young. Is there such a thing as being too young to lead? Should that age matter? No, there isn't a thing of being too young to lead. Uh, you have to learn a lot, but if you're too old, you have to <laughs> unlearn a lot. And uh, he's got some challenges because uh, He's new and he's being judged uh, by his father. Yes. He's not his father. Uh, he's done a lot uh, uh, on his own that I, as a politician, have to respect. He went in and he won a tough constituency, uh, and then he held it when all those around him were, were losing uh, their constituencies. I don't know how he'll do, but I hope he's judged on who he is, uh, not just on his lineage. You knew his, uh, his father extremely well. Um, Do you see a lot of uh, Pierre and Justin? They are quite different personalities, but they're both strong personalities. I think, if anything, uh, Justin Trudeau is more open to people than his father was. He was a, a quite guarded person. He could be uh, very uh, outreaching when he chose to be, uh, but he was a very private person. And I have the impression that uh, Justin Trudeau is really quite at home uh, meeting people. His challenge, as it was mine, is going to be to draw some people around him as candidates 
who have strong qualities that he doesn't have. I was lucky just before 79, I won a series of by-elections where we elected an outstanding French-Canadian economist uh, to the House of Commons. We elected David Crombie, then the mayor of Toronto. And again in that election, Michael Wilson, with strong credentials in the financial community, ran for me. That gave us a balanced team. That's really going to be as much a challenge for Mr. Trudeau as his age is. Tough to recognize. It must be, must be tough to recognize the qualities you don't have and, and look for that in other people. Let's talk about, about, about the Senate. Uh, a lot of Canadians talking about uh, the recent Senate scandals. Would Canadians be better off without the Senate? No. The, Canada would be better off with a strong Senate. But it has to be strong and it has to be reformed. Indeed, some aspects of the House of Commons have to be reformed too because uh, some of the practices that have come to light in the Senate uh, indicate a lack of scrutiny, a lack of accountability uh, that unfortunately is there in both houses. Uh, I think the method of appointment to the Senate probably has to be has to be changed. We have to figure out a better way to do that. But I can tell you, uh, it uh, the consideration, the debate that goes on in that Senate is far better uh, than that that goes on in the House because senators have the time and sometimes the experience to focus on uh, these issues in the way a House doesn't. That's a different Senate than yep. the one we've seen in the last uh, uh, very circus-like several weeks. Yep. But uh, that's, what, uh, that's the kind of model we have to try to resuscitate. Speaking of uh, a circus, Rob Ford is three rings all by himself. Um, what should happen to the now powerless mayor? Well, I hope that he or someone close to him, whoever that is, will persuade him to stand aside. It's becoming a really sad human tragedy and uh, a blot on a dynamic and proud city. It also proves that there are sometimes things in the best run systems that we haven't thought about. For example, no one thought about how do you move a mayor who should go and doesn't want to. Right. How do you so, consider that? Well, I think you, there just simply has to be a, a, a rule change in the future right now. I, I guess the province of Ontario has to consider uh, whether they should intervene. I gather the opposition parties have said they would agree to a, to a motion, but it's uh, uh, the thing to, to remember here is that Rob Ford is a quite exceptional character. What's happened to him uh, seems to be something that's happened to other people in other lives uh, who aren't as much in the public spotlight. Right. It's hard for them to come to terms with these things but it's very much in the public interest that something be done, and quickly. And quickly, no question about it. Thank you very much for your time, and thank you very much for the book, a fascinating read and a very optimistic read about Canada and our future. It is called How We Lead, and you'll find it on store shelves right now.